on 21st February, Turkish fifth generation fighter jet in development called Khan conducted its first flight. The jet is being developed by Turkish Aerospace Industries with help from the UK's BAE systems. The flight lasted for about 10 minutes, marking a significant milestone for the country in fighter aircraft development. Earlier in July 2022, South Korea's fifth generation fighter, Kai KF-21 Borame, conducted its first flight. It is slated to go into mass production in 2026. But where is India's fifth generation fighter aircraft AMCA? Countries that started after us have already flown their planes and we are still clueless about ours rolling out. Will we see the AMCA in IIF colors in the coming times or government will go for the import route? We'll discuss all this in detail in today's video. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARK. Before delving deep into AMCA and 5th generation aircraft, let's first understand the basics of fighter jet generations. The first generation of fighter jets developed around the Second World War had subsonic speeds and were armed with machine guns and unguided bombs and rockets. Then in the second generation, fighter jets achieved supersonic speeds and saw introduction of radar-guided missiles. In the third generation, there were significant improvements in maneuverability, avionic suits and weapon systems. Aircraft were able to fire beyond visual range missiles. Then in the fourth generation, fly-by-wire systems were deployed and aircraft had the ability to switch and swing roles between air-to-air -air and air-to-ground, eliminating the need for dedicated aircraft. Fighters like F-A-18, F-16, Mirage 2000 belong to this generation. Between 4th and 5th, another generation was added, called the 4.5 generation aircraft. The half-generation classification is because most aircraft from this generation use the same airframes as the previous generation but these are significantly improved than their previous generation types with introduction of ASA radar and data links which allowed these fighter jets to be integrated into a network-centric battle space. Dassault Rafale, Eurofighter Typhoon, Saab Gripen, FA-18 EF are a few examples from this generation. Then came the fifth generation which primarily focused on stealth. This generation fighters incorporate stealth technologies super cruise ability and more situational awareness. Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor, F-35 Lightning, Sukhoi Su-57 are a few examples of this type. There is also a 6th generation type, but it's still at an early stage of development, which is why we'll skip that today. Now coming back to 5th generation aircraft, these are currently the most advanced types of fighter jets in operation. They are designed to have low observable characteristics. This means when the enemy radar on the ground transmits electromagnetic waves into the atmosphere. Because of the stealth nature of the aircraft, radar reflection of the aircraft surface is very low. Making it very difficult to locate. Low RCS or stealth is achieved in three ways by the aerodynamic design of the aircraft, use of composite materials in the airframe and by applying radar absorbent materials on the surface. For the same reasons, most fifth generation fighters also have internal weapons bay. They can super cruise, that is, they can reach and sustain supersonic speeds without using the engine afterburners. They have advanced avionics with sensor fusion for enhanced situational awareness.
So in a battlefield scenario, a fifth generation aircraft will dominate the airspace. But which countries have these? The United States leads the charts, along with Russia and China. US has two fifth generation fighters in operation, Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. The US started developing its first fifth generation fighter, the F-22 Raptor, in the 80s. It joined service around 2005. The US government spent more than $70 billion on the program then. The US has never sold this plane to any foreign country. The second one, the F-35 Lightning, started development in the 90s. The program was unique as multiple countries such as the UK, Italy, Netherlands, took part in the development process of the aircraft and became partners of the program. F-35 has three variants, A, B and C, used by different operators. Its induction started post-2012. The total project cost runs over $1.7 trillion, making it the most expensive fighter program ever. Here is a list of operators of the F-35. F-35 is currently the most advanced type of fighter aircraft on the planet. After the US, only Russia and China have been able to indigenously develop and operate 5th generation fighters. Russia's Sukhoi Su-57 started development in the 2000s. India initially was also a partner on this project, but later backed out of it. Su-57 was finally inducted in 2020 and is now currently operational with the Russian Air Force. Russia also unveiled the single-engine Su-75 Checkmate aircraft in 2021 as a competitor of US F-35. But recently there has not been any news about this plane. Next coming to China. China started development of a fifth generation fighter in the late 90s. The Chengdu J-20 conducted its first flight in 2011 and was inducted into service in 2017. The aircraft initially was powered by Russian AL-31F turbofan engines. But in 2019, China started to put its indigenous WS-10 engines on the J-20s. There have been a number of criticisms with respect to stealth and overall technology in the Chinese J-20 as a fifth generation platform, starting from its size, presence of canards and engine technology. But the J-20 has been maturing over the years, with more than 200 planes already in service. China is also planning to deploy its new WS-15 engines on the J-20s, which would allow them to supercruise. It's difficult to assess where does the J-20 stand with respect to the F-35 and F-22. But there is no doubt that the J-20 is an advanced and potent platform. China has also another fifth generation program ongoing, with a smaller aircraft, mainly targeted for exports called the FC-31. India's quest for a fifth generation fighter started in the late 2000s when the MMRCA saga was ongoing. India decided to partner with Russia to design and develop a fifth generation fighter aircraft. The program was called FGFA. Around the same time, Indian Air Force approached the Aeronautical Development Agency, the developer of LCA Tejas, for a medium combat aircraft. The two programs, FGFA and MCA, ran parallel for quite some time. But after working with the Russians for about a decade and investing a significant amount of money in the project, India pulled out of the project. India was not satisfied with Russia at the levels of India's technological involvement and also the work share in the program. The FGFA project ultimately took shape of SU-57 program. After backing out of the project, India decided to go the indigenous way putting all the focus on the AMCA project. AMCA is designed to be a 25-ton twin-engine fifth-generation aircraft. It will have stealth shaping as well as application of radar-absorbing materials. It will also have an internal weapons bay, serpentine air intake and advanced ASA radar. It will have supercruise capability and advanced sensor fusion 
As you can see, over the years Amka's design was modified and refined. The design of the aircraft is now almost over and IAF has also accepted the final design. The project currently is running almost 5 years behind schedule and it seems it stuck because of two reasons. Around the year 2020, it was decided that the AMCA program will be a public-private partnership model among HAL, DRDO and an Indian private sector company. A private company getting involved in such a complex project right from the beginning was a first-of-a-kind experiment. Companies such as LNT, Tata, VM Technologies also showed some interest. But as per latest reports, the PPP model has now been stalled for more than 3.5 years. Possibly because of disagreements on work share and share of investment in the project. The second reason is engine. DRDO has been in discussions with Safran, General Electric and Rolls-Royce for developing a 110kN thrust engine for the AMCA for quite some time. The engine will be designed and developed from scratch in India in partnership with a foreign OEM and the IP will remain with India. But it seems that is also stuck as no country wants to share such critical technology with anyone. I have discussed the complexity of jet engine technology and India's experience with developing the Kaveri engine in a previous video. Do check it out. Because of the delay in the project, the major challenge now is to incorporate latest technologies, keeping an eye on the future so that the aircraft does not go obsolete when it is inducted into the Air Force. The technologies include AI integration, man-on-man -man teaming, pilotless operation, etc. Which is more in the realm of 6th generation. That is why ADA is pitching the aircraft in two versions. Mark 1 as 5.5 generation and Mark 2 as 6th generation. The Mark 1 version will be equipped with American GE F414 engines and Mark 2 with an indigenous engine variant. As of now, the AMCA project seems to be on hold. 15,000 crore rupees was sought for the project, but CCS approval is awaited since last year. After the CCS approval, whenever it comes, Rollout of the prototype will take another 3 years and first flight a year or two after that. So at this point, it's difficult to see the AMCA flying before 2029-2030. Testing and certification will take another 4-5 to five years. So AMCA, if the current timelines are strictly followed, will join the Indian Air Force fleet around 2035. Comparisons with Turkey and South Korea's 5th generation fighter projects is natural. They have made significant progress with their projects, whereas we are still waiting for the plane to roll out. Of course, them being NATO allies helps them getting access to critical technologies, which is not available easily to us. It's expensive to build and even more expensive and difficult to maintain. But these generations of fighters are like the building blocks in technological advancements. You can't just skip one and move to the next one. Secondly, Indian Air Force squadron strength is at an alarmingly low level, which will go down further in coming times. China is already operating 5th generation fighters, which means Pakistan may also get its hands on 5th generation fighters soon, possibly before India does. Indian Air Force is fast losing its competitive edge in the region, which is a grave cause of concern. The Air Force, DRDO and the government need to sit down and find a solution to this problem as soon as possible. To maintain strategic autonomy, India has to develop its own 5th generation fighter aircraft. As it takes a step forward, towards becoming the third largest economy of the world. We are already late. It's time to catch up and catch up fast. Thanks for watching. Please support the channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.